Let's learn about endothermic and exothermic energy diagram. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How do we interpret endothermic and exothermic energy diagrams? This is an energy diagram. It's a graph that shows the total energy change over the span of a reaction. Here you can see on the left side, the y-axis is the potential energy. And in the bottom, the x-axis is the reaction span over time. We start with the reactants on the left side and we can see the products on the right side. But really what we're trying to interpret is this symbol, the enthalpy of the reaction. What is enthalpy? Well, enthalpy is the total change in the energy of the reaction. This Greek letter delta represents a change in something, and the capital H represents heat energy. Typically, when we, rec when we calculate the change in something, we take the final and subtract the initial. And so here we're going to take the total energy of the products, and we're going to subtract the total energy of the reactants. And our answer is going to be measured in joules or kilojoules, depending on what our graph says. Now, this equation might look very familiar. You remember in a previous lesson, we talked about calculating total bond energy. However, total bond energy is the reverse of this reaction. Typically, you do the reactants minus the products. So let's take a look at one energy diagram. This is the combustion of methane. We're gonna take a look at it piece by piece. At the start of our reaction, we have our reactants. They have a certain amount of potential energy. We know that because it takes some energy in order to break these bonds. Now, when you see the reactions start to go, notice that the graph starts to jump up a little bit. We call this the activation energy, or the energy needed to start the reaction. For methane, you might need to light a match. Once we reach over this hump, then the reaction takes over, and we can see the total energy change over time. At the very end of our reaction is the potential energy of the products. Now, what we're really trying to see is how the reactants and the products change. That's represented by this green arrow pointed downwards. This is the change in enthalpy. Here, we have a total decrease in enthalpy. Now, the graph you're seeing here is an exothermic reaction. It's a negative delta H. An exothermic reaction is a reaction where energy is released to the surroundings. And typically, the products have less stored energy than the reactants, as you see here. The opposite of an exothermic reaction is an endothermic reaction. This is a positive delta H. We can see that here in this energy diagram, where nitrogen and oxygen combine to form nitrogen monoxide. You can see at the very beginning, it takes a lot of activation energy to get this reaction to progress. And once it does, we end up with products that are higher in energy than we started with in the reactants. So remember, endothermic reactions are reactions that energy is absorbed by the reaction from its surroundings. Products always have more stored energy than the reactants in endothermic reactions. Now, we talked about both exothermic and endothermic reactions, but what are the signs of these reactions in everyday life? Well, remember, exothermic reactions release heat energy. So typically, typically these reactions feel warm to the touch. Think of an instant hot pack or a hand warmer you might use in the winter. Typically, when you squeeze together the pack, it breaks apart two chemicals that mix. Now, when those chemicals mix, they release heat energy that we can feel. That's an exothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions are the opposite. They absorb heat energy and they feel cold to the touch. Instant cold packs work very similar to instant hot packs, but just in reverse. When you squeeze together the package and break the seal, the chemicals mix. Now these chemicals absorb energy from the surrounding, which is why they feel cold. They're stealing the energy from your hand, making your hand feel colder than it originally was. Let's take a look at an example practice of an energy diagram. Here we have three questions related to this specific energy diagram. What is the total enthalpy of the reaction shown? Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? And how would this reaction feel in your hand? Well, I'm gonna start off by looking at the reactants. Notice the reactants at the beginning of our reaction are around 45 kilojoules. Now there is some activation energy here, but in all essence, this doesn't really matter in terms of calculating the enthalpy, because notice that the reaction goes up, but then it goes back down the equivalent amount. What we really care about is where the products end. Notice the, pro notice the products here end at 10 kilojoules. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the total enthalpy, which we can see is decreasing overall. 
The total enthalpy change is the products minus the reactants. So I'm going to take my 10 kilojoules of energy of my products and subtract the 45 kilojoules of energy that my reactant started as. This is going to give me a negative delta H or a negative enthalpy, specifically negative 35 kilojoules. That's the total enthalpy of the reaction. This reaction specifically is an exothermic reaction. It has a negative delta H or a negative enthalpy. That means it is releasing energy to the surroundings. This reaction would feel warm because of that. If I put my hand over this reaction or if I'm touching a beaker where this reaction is taking place, that loss of energy will be transferred to my hand and I would feel that as warmth and heat. That leads us to the end of the note. Take a moment and review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.